This is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 238, recorded Saturday, March 21st, 2015, right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. You're listening to the Avaya Podcast Network. Now, here's your host, Mark Fletcher. Working for Avaya, I get to see lots of technology and innovation that's based on communications enablement. Now, while the bulk of that technology is designated to enable day-to-day business communications, as well as the new trend of unified communications for users, there is some of that technology that's focused on public safety communications. Now, for the most part, these technologies can be segmented into three primary silos or buckets. The first is the originating network, which is used to generate emergency communications from persons in need of help. The second is the backbone network that carries the originating traffic to its destination. And finally, the third are the public safety networks that answer those calls for assistance. Now, almost for as long as emergency communications has existed, a dichotomy, or potentially a trichotomy of technology, has also existed, as the pendulum of innovation swings back and forth. Now, what this does is create disparate functionality between the origination point and the endpoint, aka the PSAP. And this often results in frustration and a lack of efficiency. Now, before telephones even existed, most communities relied on the town crier to walk the streets delivering relevant news and information. Now, while that might have been effective for the people it reached, obviously its ability to scale and expand was limited by the lack of technology for both communications and transportation. When Alexander Graham Bell called out for help in his lab when he spilled acid on himself, Watson, his assistant, heard him over the prototype telephone, but that was a closed network with no connectivity to the outside world, and he still had to run to get help. Now, after telephones had been invented and were widely deployed to citizens and police departments, a person in need of help needed to know the location of where they were, the number of the agency that they needed to call, as well as be able to describe what was wrong. Then in 1968, 911 was invented and quickly rolled out in many areas. But while the access problem was solved, as calls are now delivered to public safety through a single, universal three-digit number that would be valid everywhere, public safety still had no idea of who called or from where. So the pendulum swung back the other way and enhanced 911 was added that provided emergency personnel with the billing address of record information for a specific phone number. However, the rapidly expanding cellular industry now allowed telephones to become more mobile, swinging the pendulum back the other way. That swing quickly reached its apex as no technology existed for the cellular device to report its location to public safety, let alone the network as GPS technology was still in its infancy from a public availability perspective. Now, desktop computing platform power became more affordable and a surge in technology and applications occurred in public safety that allowed them to automate their systems and processes on the back end, becoming more efficient and more connected. On the flip side, advances in the cellular network added in GPS functionality, but that information was only relevant to the actual cellular providers, who would in turn have to provide that information to the appropriate 911 call taker, regardless of where they were. Now, desktop computing investments led to computers that were portable, luggable, and finally notebook sized, allowing their easy transport. But now, the third player in this trifecta, the network, had been neglected since the early days of 911. And in the world of today's high speed internet backbone, and speeds to individuals rivaling what some developing countries may have had about 10 years ago, public safety has fallen into the trap of two intelligent nodes that are adjacent to each other with no communication path, or at least one that would handle the new data types and formats that are available on today's smart devices. So this becomes the gap, building the NG911 network and where do you start? As we get closer and closer to delivering the next generation 911 network for tomorrow, many network engineers and architects ponder on where to start building. But in my opinion, this is really not that difficult of a question. The answer is to start wherever you can. The answer is to continue wherever you can. And the answer is to complete whatever you can. Why? Well, simple. Because the network, when it is ready for Next Gen 911, will be able to accept and terminate next generation 911 calls. But that can't happen until all of the pieces are ready. And because of this, the challenge becomes establishing an operational point where you can utilize technology to deliver the services that you require today, but allow you an easy migration 
integration into the emergency services, IP network, and NextGen 911. So while many will be content to sit back and watch the pendulum swing from side to side, we here at Avaya believe we have the technology, the network, and the thought leadership to orchestrate an end-to-end solution that's got the required resiliency, redundancy, and uptime for this mission-critical life safety initiative. For the 911 Talk podcast, this is Fletch. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. The preceding podcast has been brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. I'm Spider Harrison, the official voice dude of APN. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Avaya underscore APN and check us out on the web at avaya.com slash APN.